Good morning, everybody. We are back in the shop today with my Dodge. It is a 2004 Dodge Ram 2500, and it's time to address some issues with ball joints, brakes, wheel bearings. We're gonna go through all that stuff in this episode. I just need to do an inspection. I know the ball joint has play for sure. You can see it right here. That play right there is in the top ball joint, and it's really hard to see. But the whole knuckle is moving there. That's what we're doing today. I didn't know, found a problem I didn't know existed. All right, so right here, first thing that uh, I saw is this broken sway bar in link. I had no idea this was like this. I'm sure that's been making some sort of noise. The other side's not broken, but yeah, so we need two new, we'll do sway bar end links. Brakes. We're getting down there. I think we're going to end up putting brakes on, new pads on there. Our rotors are in really good shape still. So we'll just go ahead and save those. We'll put new pads on it. Um, we're going to have to disassemble all this anyway, so we'll go ahead... This is a free spin kit from Ballistic Fab. Uh, there's, there's another company or two that make this as well. It basically takes your, your modern Dodge um, sealed bearing hubs and you swap them out for the old style tapered bearing hubs. So you have pack or greasable bearings. So then you get an actual locking and lockable and unlockable hub. Um, from the factory, these things have a unit bearing, a sealed bearing, and it basically spins all the front end components all the time. So you have your axle shaft spinning, and that's connected to the differential. So your differential spinning, your front drive line is spinning, and if you just add, and, I, and if you add this kit, it stops all of that stuff from spinning all the time. So you're not going to wear those parts out. They only get used when you click this thing into four wheel drive, which is what they used to do. And uh, I just think it's a better, uh, a better system. Um, and then those unit bearings, when they go bad, you're pretty much you know, you're stuck on the side of the road. These are serviceable. There's some advantages. There's some disadvantages too because it used to be that I could just slap it into four wheel drive, and you know you'd have four wheel drive right away. Now it's you know it's old school, so you have to get out, put your hubs in. But we don't use four wheel drive all that much, so this is a better system for just rolling down the road because you get all of that stuff, stop all that stuff from spinning and wearing out. So brakes, we're going to do brake pads. We're going to clean these rotors up, but they look really good. I think the other side looks the same. So that's good. We'll save money there. Uh, ball joints. Let's see if I can get you in there so you can see this a little better. So here's our ball joint, top ball joint. So I don't know what the bottom looks like, but you know, if we got one bad, we're going to go ahead and replace all four of them. These are the original ball joints on the truck. The truck has almost 200,000 miles on it. We're right at about um, 198,000 miles. We're coming up on 198,000 miles. So these things have served their purpose. Uh, steering wise, we did some steering stuff last year or a year or so ago. Uh, maybe it was like a year and a half ago. I don't know, but we replaced all the tie rod ends and stuff like that. Uh, like I said, we're going to go ahead and we'll do these sway bar in links. I don't know why this one broke per se. Hopefully, I mean, I'm, maybe just fatigue over time. It's hard to say. 
the end does look like it's been beat on something. When this thing is down, this is going to be sitting in a different spot. Uh, so, I don't know. But uh, we'll definitely, we're going to get some sway bar end links. Ball joints. Check the bearings. Pad slap. I think we might have a brake problem in the rear, though. The brakes in the rear might be worn out. I know one di one of the discs has some has some uh, some pretty good wear on it, like it looking like it's maybe metal to metal. So we'll probably be back there doing those as well. But I'm just gonna get started. I'm gonna get the other tire off, and we're gonna bust this apart so we can take a look at the bearings and make sure we don't need bearings. I don't have any of the parts yet, so I'm basically exploring, doing an exploratory. Um, disassembly here to get a list of everything that I need to get this thing back up and running. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is basically like you're going to do a brake job. There's two 13 millimeter bolts on the caliper. We're going to pull those two 13s and then pull the caliper off. So these long 13 mil bolts, 13 head bolts, and then that should just Come right off. Okay, so there's our caliper off. We're gonna have to push those pistons back in. Let's see if we can do that now before we get too far. Boots look good on the pistons, on the calipers. One thing you should look at if these are busted and there's a bunch of crud getting in there, caliper's gonna go bad for sure. Uh, boots are still good on here, so I'm going to put this inner pad on there. So here's the level of our brakes right here. We're down to, we're getting down to the bottom. And honestly, we're not to the to the squealer yet, but we're so low at this point, it, it's going to be worth it. We're already going to be in here to just slap some new pads on here before we get down to metal and we start doing something to the rotors because the rotors are a really nice shape, like I said earlier. So I'm gonna put this in here and I'm gonna grab a clamp and see if I can push those pistons back in. All right, so those pistons are going in easy. That's nice, it's a good sign. I might end up with uh, an over full rever or brake reservoir after this because if I'm gonna um, push the cylinders in on front and the back it's gonna end up being over full so I might have to get some suck some fluid out of that but that went in real easy so that's a good sign so we're doing good so far so I'm gonna take this caliper and I'm going to zip tie it up out of the way so we're done with that for now Okay, there it goes. All right, so that's that's out of the way. So now this big bracket here. Let's pull this other pad out. Break pad out. We should be getting new hardware with our pads. So let's go ahead pull the hardware off. Okay, so. Now you got this big caliper here, this caliper bracket. In order to get the rotor off, you got to take the caliper bracket off. So you got two, I believe they're 17s. Let's see if I'm right. 17, maybe? I am wrong. I think these actually might be 18s. Yep, 18s. All right. I can do much with that other than maybe knock some of the the surface rust off of there. So here's our ballistic fabrication hub. It's uh, actually an aluminum hub, and um, it has the provisions for your ABS sensor or ABS ring. Um, I am not gonna lie, I, I, I have had a little bit of problem with these. Uh, when I got them, I put it all together and I ended up having, I blew out some bearings not too long after getting it and then, you know, I don't know if I set it up wrong or whatnot, but anyways, 
it turned out that the machining wasn't really good to hold the races in and have them you know stay without being without being able to spin inside the hub so i had to take it to a machine shop i mean i'm sure they've probably uh resolved this problem since then but Ever since I did that, the second time when I basically redid the bearings and had took it to the machine shop so that those races would seat in there and stay, um, it's been good, so no complaints. Okay. So the tie rod is going to have to come off, so I went ahead and just knocked those off because they were standing right there and I was looking at them. Uh, let's see, I think we should, so you can see the hub moving there, or the top ball joint. We've got a good amount of play in that one. Um, I'm going to go ahead, we're going to disconnect this ABS sensor, which is an Allen. Okay, so that's not factory, so if you're working on a factory truck, I mean, some of this, some of this isn't going to apply unless you have this free spin kit, you know, so not too many. I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of them out there, but it's not the standard. The standard bearing is way easier to take off. Like I said, it's just that one big nut, four bolt, four nuts on the back or four bolts on holding on the back side of this. And then that, that uh, unit bearing comes out. So this is a little more complicated than that, but this is how old trucks were. They all had this kind of similar setup here with a spindle and um, tapered bearings. Okay, so that is our ABS sensor. Let's get that out of the way, because we don't want to have to replace that. I have, I have had to do one of these since I've owned it, so. All right, so we got ABS sensor out of the way. So now it's time for the Warren hub. That's more Allens. So when I put this thing in four wheel drive, it's been making a weird noise and I think I've figured out what it is. One of these U-joints is, is toast. Oh jeez. Okay. Ooh. The hub feels really good actually. Uh, I'd be surprised if the bearings are bad in here. But we're gonna pull it apart and we'll probably end up repacking it. So there's an inner snap ring here that you gotta take off. Okay, on the axle stub. Okay, got that one. I'm pretty sure this one has to come out a little, a little rough coming out for some reason. And I think the hub should actually come out at this point. Let's grab some nut bolts. Let's try this. Here we go. Okay, so there's the hub. This looks fine. So now, I wonder if I have the tool. I think I have the tool for this. So there's our first nut holding the hub on. Okay. Okay, there's another one. So there's a locking mechanism in here. I'll show you guys. Where is my pick? So this is not a factory Dodge thing either. These are aftermarket locks. So that nut that we just took off that was pretty loose, loose enough for me to spin off by hand, is basically the lock nut. And this right here is the lock. So you got this piece here and it's got all these holes in it. And then you got these little tang, yeah, you got a, a little, a little stud on the next nut. So I'll show you that in a second. Let's put that off to the side. Okay. Okay, so you got this. Plenty of grease in there. This is going to be a fun job because of the grease. So you have this nut here. This is the one that holds the bearings in. You set the preload with the bearings and it has this little uh, stud on it. So 
you turn that and then you you lock when you put this in it actually locks it in and it can't turn it can't back out um, and actually so like this little tang locks into the hub and then this locks into there and it's just basically locks the whole thing so it can't back off on you I think the hub will just come off at this point yep there we go so wheel bearing looks pretty good uh, the outer one the outer wheel bearing I'm gonna have to pop this seal to check it and then we're gonna have to get a new seal probably so I'll we'll set that off to the side for now but I need to pop that seal out and check that all right so that gets us to this point here's our spindle okay right here U joint is completely wasted. So we gotta do a U joint, at least one. I'm gonna go ahead and zip these bolts out. It's gonna take me a minute, but I should be able to get it done without too much drama. Wobble socket for the win. Okay. All right, well that one doesn't want to come, so let's see if we can. So, oops. got all four of those out. So let's see if we can get the hub off. All right, so now we're getting experimental because I've been I've been heating hammering and this thing just will not budge so now we're gonna start uh, this polar isn't big enough to get around and reach these lips here so uh, I got these chains we're gonna try it I'm just making stuff up at this point all right now let's whack it around see what happens at least that'll help because that'll put pressure putting pressure to help pull it out um, I keep thinking that maybe I'm seeing a gap but that's pretty hot that is pretty hot there's a lot of pressure on this. I'm seeing the slightest of gaps. Imagine the amount of force you're putting in, you're pushing that axle all the way into the iron house. Well, like it only, it's pushing it right against the housing. Yeah. Um, I cannot believe, I've never had anything this stuck before. This is just nuts. Nuts. The original welder. Yeah. That's, that's it. That's close. 
That's it. I think it should come out now. Right. That's it. Hooray! I don't I want to touch it. To... It's hot. Oh yeah. I was here to see the victory. We were moment. here to see the victory. For one side at least. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. Hopefully the other side ain't gonna be as bad. Well the other side had the seal. The seal looked like it was leaking, so it's got a bunch of grease, so maybe that'll yeah. work in my advantage. Look at that. Just rusted itself together. Uh-huh. Tons of antices is going on there. Tons of antices and gonna be really clean. Real clean, maybe With a little all sandy. The rest of stuff, yeah. yeah. A few thousands extra. Yeah. All right, so we are on day three of this project. Technically, there have all been partial days. Same as today, I couldn't get out here until it is now almost three o'clock, I think. So, we'll see how far we get. Uh, so we're down to, I already slid the axle shaft out of the other side, and it's usually real simple. You, know, you gotta kinda pivot it down and walk it out. But, this one will only turn this way. It won't turn this way. This is the way we need to turn because the because the U-joint uh, is frozen in that direction and this direction it's totally wasted. So what I'm gonna have to do what I'm gonna have to do is try to get the C clips out of the or the clips that hold the um, the clips that hold the U-joint in so I can whack the U-joint and get the U-joint to to uh, loosen up or just get the cap out of the way altogether. But in order to do that, these things have clips on the U-joints. So I gotta get in there and uh, try to get that clip out. It's gonna be a little bit difficult, it being in the axle still, but it's definitely doable. Oh yeah. All right, so there's the C-clip. So that's one of them. Let's see if we can do the other one. So, we got both of those C-clips out. So what I'm gonna do now, is I'm actually, there's two more. I just got the ones on the ones that are frozen. So I'm actually gonna take the air hammer, because I'm sick of dealing with this thing, and I'm gonna pound on that U-joint, and see if I can push that cap out a little bit. You guys just missed. I just whacked this thing, took the nuts off. I'm trying to see if I can get the knuckle in them. Knuckle in the book and the axle out. One swoop, which there goes the top. There we go. I checked the other side, and the other side pulled out with the axle oriented like this. It just came straight out of the housing, so I'm not sure what's going on there. We'll check it before we put it back together, make sure we don't need to do some like clearancing right here. It just seems like these little, it couldn't actually, it seems like it couldn't fit through, but it went together that way, so something else is going on here. Maybe because our U-joint's messed up, it's not letting us get exactly right so it goes in, but there we go. Finally got that sucker out. Whew. Hopefully our axle seal's okay after all that. So I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna pull the ball joint. Actually, you know what? No, it's fine. Let's just work on this one side. So we're down to the ball joints here. We have to press these guys out and press some new ones in. I actually got all the parts. So we're actually ready to really start working on this thing. I do have the knuckle on the other side, but that's the only thing at this point yeah, let's get the tool, and we'll press this out, and then we'll work on cleaning all this up, cleaning all this up. Um, let me make sure that, I think there's a snap ring or something here. Yep, there is a snap ring. For this top one, I don't think there's anything for that one. All right, so we got our snap ring right here. We'll get the snap ring pliers. Hopefully that comes out. All right, snap ring pliers. Oh, that's
snap things. I'm going to break those snap ring pliers if I do that. So let's get the hammer and chisel and see if we can break this loose. There we go. It's just a little stuck. All right, so we got both sides broken loose. Now our snap ring pliers should be able to go ahead and work. There we go. There. Okay. So we got that. Let's take a look at our new ball joints and see if they're anywhere close to the right ones. So these are, uh, so everything up here, the U joints, the ball joints, they're all non-greasable from the factory. So luckily with this upgrade here, this has got a spot for a grease dirt. This looks like an upper. And then, here's our lower. Yep, our lower, which has got a snap ring. Yep, okay. All right, so here's our tool, ball joint press set. So let's start with, how do you do the, the upper? So does this fit over there? I think it does, okay. So that guy fits there. Okay, and then that guy goes on there, like that. Well, that doesn't look that great, but let's give it a shot. See what happens. Of course, this is actually keeping it from coming out, but now that fits in there perfectly. So. All right, so I need to make sure I got the right cup on the bottom here because if it's if it's catching a lip on something and we're just doing nothing, that could be a problem. Okay, let's see. Are we indeed catching on this lip and just pressing on nothing? Yep, we are totally just pressing on the lip of the ball joint, which is not going to do anything for us. So we got to go to this big fella. That should be coming out. I think that just went. That's actually moving. So, all right. Woo. Here's our lower. I guess we're ready for the tool. Let's go a little bit of PB around the edge of this. Okay. I think in this one on top. Yep, that's a good fit. This guy like that and the tool. So I'm guessing that this one has to go through there. And we just press on this guy. Seated. That feels like we're just about seated there. All right, see what happens.
it is. Yes! Yes! Victory! Hot, hot victory! Sweet hot victory! Alright. Let's grab this sucker. Alright. You could probably do that with like a map torch, a handheld one, but it's going to take you a while. That sucker, I don't think that was coming out without heat. So if you're doing this at home, heat is probably going to be the key. Alright, now i got to clean all this junk up and uh, clean the knuckle up. I'm just going to go ahead and turn you guys off and do my cleaning, probably wire wheel, some brake clean, all that stuff. Chase everything to make sure there's no weird sharp edges on any of these once it cools down. And then we'll be going back together with new ball joints. Okay, so we're back. We have clean parts, new ball joint. We're going to do a little bit of grease around here just to help this sucker go in. All right, so the other thing I did, so obviously I painted this. I wire wheeled it all. I took a file and filed off any sharp edges or weird things where these ball joints are going to get pressed in. So hopefully that helps us out. It should. It seems like a good idea to me. So now we got to figure out how to use this ball joint thing. Ball joint press and press these back in. Alright, so this thing has a grease fitting but it has a stud in it right now which I'm assuming is to keep it from getting broken off in this process that we're doing right here. This guy just barely fits on there. All right, so I can already see it's going in crooked. good of luck with the second one all right I gotta look and see where this it's got the grease fitting right there let's see if that's gonna go to the front I'm guessing either goes to the front or the back because if it's straight here I think we're gonna have a problem accessing it ball joint must be installed with grease fitting parallel to stop out tab stop out tab so that would be that way I guess that makes sense. So it's pointing this way, so that's probably your best shot at getting grease in there. But I'm wondering if it's looking at the front or the back. There's a little bit more room towards the back. Either way, I think it's going to work, so I'm going to point it towards the back one. So I'm basically pointing it parallel to here, which is what the little instructions guy says. So. <laughs>
Okay. Hmm. We're only gonna know really if we uh, can get this here uh, snap ring in. Perfect. Okay. Woo. So now we have a boot. We have our boot, and this is our boot installer. Oh, well that's our boot installer's cracked. Hopefully, it still works. Get this straight. Okay. There's our boot. Okay. Boots on. All right, now the question is, do we put these grease dirks in now? I say we do. Okay. Got that one in there. So now we need to put that guy back up in there. The knuckle. Knuckles up there. So now. Oh, that's the wrong way. This way. pin okay so those need to be greased but I think I'm gonna slam the hub back on since I have it right here no nope, we gotta do the axle and everything first so um, I'm gonna go ahead and move to the other side I'm not gonna film it I'm gonna do these ball joints so I can go ahead and get the tool back and then we will uh, continue moving forward from here Good morning everybody. I'm on the other side of the truck now because I wanted to show you guys that we got the knuckles all painted up and the um, uh, getting them installed. Oh, I need a bracket. I'm missing a bracket. So we're making progress here. It's another day. Today is the day hopefully that we get this finished. I gotta put this little ABS bracket on this under this upper ball joint nut. All right, so knuckles, knuckles are done. Um, we can't, I got the hubs uh, cleaned up and painted. Um, and we're gonna end up putting anises in here because this is, this is where our rust problem was before. But we got them both painted, so that should help uh, stop the rust. But we're also gonna do some anises. But first, we gotta get axle shafts in. And in order to do that, we gotta do U-joints. So I'm probably going to show you the other one that's that's uh, all bad, um, but we got to do the U-joints on these, and then we'll be able to put these guys in. On to U-joints after I tighten this. All right, so now we get a good look at how messed up our U-joint is. Let's turn this on. So that one, this side is all loosey-goosey. And then the other two caps are seized up, so. All right, guys, this video is getting way too long. I'm actually gonna do a separate video on doing U-joints. I actually don't do them in the press. I do them with my vise and a hammer. But I'm gonna do a separate video to show you guys that, so we're just gonna skip past this part. All right, so that's it right there. That's one axle done. Let's go see if we can slide it into the housing, see if it'll cooperate with us this time. Slide this guy in. I don't know why this one is so hard to get out. Um, this is an aftermarket piece here. This is not a factory piece. So when I did the free spin kit, this came with it. That one over there slid out just fine. This one, you know, like this, and it just 
doesn't quite have enough room, so I think we need a little hammering. Can't be hammering on it with a dang regular hammer. You know what? I'm not going to mess with this. I'm going to clearance it because the next time I try to do this, it's going to be the same story and I won't be able to get it out if I hammer it in. So we're going to take the flapper wheel. Okay. There we go. Okay. Okay. Let's just send it home. We're not going to worry about the paint on those corners. Screw it. All right. There we go. One axle home. All right. I'm going to work on the other one. And I'm going to come back over here and we're going to... Actually, let's bolt this hub on now just for fun. All right. So like I told you guys before, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some anises around this hub because I never want to have to deal with what I had had to deal with to take this thing off. That was ridiculous. Okay, we got a bearing in there that the shaft needs to fit over. I need a little bit of massaging here. Or not massaging, but a little bit of... I'm going to go ahead I think it's going to be smart to add some Loctite to them. Okay, so that guy, that's done to this point. So the next thing is actually the hub, which I have not cleaned out the bearings and install new seals. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the other side done to this point, and then we're gonna come back. I'm gonna come back and we're gonna start cleaning bearings and seals. It's gonna be a big mess. We gotta get all the old grease out, get new grease in it, and uh, put it all back together. All right, so I wanted to show you guys, um, I got these um, sway bar end links off of Amazon, and they're heavy duty. And also one of the important things about them is they're about two inches longer and I have about I think a two inch spacer in here for the for the spring so it puts it at the at a correct angle so this is actually not the way this goes but I'll, I'll um, throw a link in there to these I don't know I can't vouch for them at this point but it's basically a grade 8 bolt and it's sleeved and it has a heim joint a half inch heim joint which you have to ha actually have to run a half inch bit through this uh, this mount right here to fit this guy but they seem pretty good and they got polyurethane bushings up here so i mean i can't vouch for how good these things are or if they're going to hold up but i mean you can see that compared to this and plus the angle correction with it being two inches longer so this is what i'm going to run and they're about the same as the part store would have cost for some replacement stock ones. gonna cinch it down for now right there and then when we get it down we'll see where how it's sitting so that's it for sway bar so we got this we got the both hubs or both spindles uh, knuckles on we got the ball joints done I got the steering reconnected we got the sway bar connected so now we're down to the hubs which I gotta I'm gonna spend some time cleaning those everything on this this truck is basically my forever truck. So whenever I do something on it, I go above and beyond like painting all these things because they were super rusty and obviously rust was a problem when we went to go take these apart. So I wish I would have painted them in the first place, but taking it apart, taking the time to clean everything. So that way the next time I have to come in and work on this thing, it's just going to be that much easier and uh, help keep the rust off of everything. So I'm making sure everything is greased, just doing my due diligence and making sure everything is as best as I can do it. Um, so the bearings are coming up next. Once we get that, 
once we get those on, you know, we'll be able to set those and then put the brakes on. And then, you know, this thing is a big project doing all this. So it's going to get done today, though. It's about one o'clock. I got, you know, a few more hours of work easily, but we're going to get it done. And then we got to do the rear brakes as well. So I'm going to get some lunch and I'm going to get back to it. And we're going to be packing bearings. All right. So I'm at the point where I've got this all cleaned up. Uh, I got the hub cleaned up. Just got all of the old grease out of there. And now it's time to pack these bearings. I don't have a bearing packer. I probably need to get one at some point, but you know, I just keep doing this by hand. It's definitely possible to do it. You just pack it all the way around, pack it in the, in that back joint, especially, and in the front joint or whatever you want to call it, the space between the, the race and the bearing cage. And then I'll take it and I'll definitely spin it around. Make sure I get all that grease in there. Uh, so that's pretty much it. You know, just pack the grease in there. Do it over and over again. Be very thorough with it. Making a mess. Yeah, and you can see sometimes when you rotate it around, it'll pull some of that grease in and then you'll end up with a with a spot in here that you need to pack more grease into. Right there. Same on the front side. Make sure you're packing all those in. And then rotate it. I like that. And then I'm gonna give this a nice layer. Okay, stick that guy in there. All right, lastly, oh, so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna pack the back side of this really good back in here. And then we'll hammer the seal in. And then that'll be done. I'm not even sure why I clean my hands at all. Uh, here's our new seal. I want to definitely get the grease back in this little spot in here. That's really important. That'll help hold that seal in or hold that little spring in. Okay. Put some on the lip of the seal for sure. And then this guy goes in there. There we go. that's down all the way perfect all right we got grease everywhere and now I got a big gap between the bearing and the seal so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna pack grease in between the seal and that gap I may be putting way too much bearing grease in here I mean I've done it before where I've just basically packed the bearings and then left it at that but I just you know, I want to make sure that I don't have any problems with this. And this last time I did the same thing where I packed as much grease in here as I could in these spots. And then I didn't have any problems. These bearings are still good. So I'm just going to do the same exact thing. Okay, clean some of this up. We can slide this on the hub. And then we'll pack our other bearing that goes in the front. And then we'll finish putting this together. We'll go ahead, slide this guy on there. Perfect. All right, so we got to pack this bearing that fits in this side, and then we'll put this whole thing back together. All right, so this guy goes in here. There we go. All right, so we got our nut, and it's got that little tang on it. That little stud and then our um, locking ring so that little stud goes out okay seat that down nice and hard okay feels good I'm gonna make sure that this is seated down good so those bearings are good and then basically gonna back it off a little bit 
till it spins nice and freely. Okay. Okay, so I think we're there. And now we'll back it off just a little bit. Let's see, where's our stud? Stud down there. All right, so this stuff is kind of fiddly. So basically you have to get that, you have to get this, uh, the ring lined up with one of these holes. And you can put this, you can put this lock in two different ways. So I put it in that way and it doesn't quite line up. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip it. See if that helps. Okay, so I'm actually gonna loosen in the, the nut just a little bit and that should help. Okay, so we gotta, I see it now. We gotta go back just a tiny bit. I think it's better to be a little loose, they're tapered bearings, than to be too tight and actually blow one out. So I'm airing on the side of a little looser. So I'm gonna, oh, that was way too far. Okay, let's try that. Here we go. So we're lined up there. We throw our other nut, our lock nut on. We gotta get this one tight. I'm not sure why this one was loose in there, but I wanna actually get more grease in here behind this bearing too. So I might use a grease gun and just squirt it in there. Okay, so we're going to do that. Our hub is nice. I'm going to shove some grease back in there. And then we're going to be putting our hub back in. Alright, so we've got this little squirter guy on here. I'm not sure what we're looking at, but I'm going to go ahead and get some grease all around the back side of this bearing. got that all right so of course the battery runs out at a very inopportune moment or actually the SD card was full so that's worse uh, so we got a different one swapped out in there got the other one downloading inside and uh, we're gonna finish this side up hopefully so we're pretty close to being done with the greasy stuff on this side if we can just Get these gloves back on, get this hub in. That's one of the reasons why I don't wear gloves for often. Alright, ooh, look at that. So there's that guy. Alright, there's a couple of snap rings that happen here, have to happen here. So, we got this big one on the outside. I'm gonna go ahead and go with that one first. Well, we were doing good. Oh. Can see that one. Yes, Johnny. What? Hold on, Johnny. Hold on. Okay, so we're almost there. We gotta push this thing in. Let's get in. Let's get this guy. So I hope. There we go. So that's locked in there. That's easy enough. And then we got another snap ring here. I think I gotta push the hub through a little bit more. There we go. Alright, I finally went into that. What it is is that bearing. There's like a support bearing in the back of the of the spindle. And I think it was having a hard time getting into there. And now it's totally totally in. Okay, so then we got this snap ring. Goes on there. Bam. Then that can go back in there. Perfect. All right, so now we are ready for the hub itself. So we got plenty of grease on both the inside and the outside of that. 
This spring goes in here like that. And then, so this is basically how the hub works. So when you spin the hub in, it pushes on this guy. And then this guy goes in there and that locks, locks the, uh, the axle to the hub. And then that spring, well, there's a lot of grease in there right now. There we go. And the hub, you unlock the hub and it pushes its way back out. So, we got a lot of grease in there. Maybe that's too much grease in there, but that's okay. I think it'll be fine. Alright, so now, let's make sure that everything in here looks good. Oh, I see. Yeah, this is actually the spring has come off of its little keepers. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. So that's unlocked. Okay, so now to check if our hub is working, here we go. Let's go ahead and put you in here. You can see the axle spinning there, or not spinning, should not be spinning because we're on not locked and then go ahead and lock the hub in there we go okay and now we'll unlock there we go hub works um so the rest of it pretty simple go ahead and just knock it out okay we got we've got the this is the um, ABS sensor okay this guy on So these bolts that hold the, uh, the, the bracket for the rotor, uh, Loctite, definitely Loctite. Okay, so there's our brake bracket. So all we're left with is the two bolts for the brake caliper and we got new pads here. So this one. I'm gonna say it goes on the front. Okay. And this one goes on the back. All right, that easy. All right, so we got these bolts. That is one side completely done other than putting the wheel on it. So, so I'm gonna get on that other side and I'll see you guys when we're doing the brakes in the back. All right, you guys, we got that front done. I just got a piece of metal, metal sliver. Um, so we got the front done. We're onto the back brakes. As I said earlier, this truck has almost 200,000 on it. We're at 198. I have never done these brakes back here and I don't think they were done before I owned the truck. Like I was saying, I don't think they were done before I owned the truck. I think these are the original, this is the first time 200,000 miles on the rear. Uh, the front I've done, I think this is the third time, so. All right, this video is getting way, way too long, so we're gonna go ahead and skip to the end of this brake job. Uh, it's very simple, just like the front, except for it's even easier because the bolts are a little easier to access. I'm going to make a separate video on how to do the brakes on this. It's just like the front, like I said. So let's go ahead and skip past it. A little clip. There we go. There we go. So we'll put our hardware back in there. And then go to the other side. And then we'll be hopefully be done with this thing real soon. 
All right, everybody, this thing is finally done. Unfortunately, I left the key on for the last, like, what? This thing's been up here for, like, four days now. So uh, the battery's dead. Can't start it. So I got to charge that thing up. But I went through and I checked the differentials, the fluid on the differentials, the transfer case, greased everything that could be greased. So I just kind of went over the whole truck. So just a brief uh, recap. The last thing we did was we put rotors and pads on the back. Um, so the brakes are fresh there. The front, our rotors were really nice still, and I think I probably replaced them the last time I did the brakes. So we just did pads up there. But we also repacked the wheel bearings, greased everything, put new seals in the hubs. We did both U-joints on the front axles, both left and right axles. We did, what else did we do? Oh yeah, sway bar in links. Both of the sway bar in links, so we had a broken one. We did a bunch of stuff on this thing. It's just a ridiculous amount of work so uh this thing is really um i like it. it's in a good spot you know i got a, a bunch of stuff done and uh refreshed things like these brakes 200,000 miles you know this truck has two, 200,000 miles on it now we're close to it and uh i'm just glad to have gone through it there's a lot of stuff that was uh bad that i didn't even know about um oh yeah ball joints so ball joints had 200,000 miles on the hitch had a little bit of slop that's one big uh, advantage to having a solid axle on the front is because the ball joints do, don't do a lot other than just basically turn when the wheel turns. You know, if you have an independent truck, they're doing a lot more and they wear out way quicker. But they did have some slop in them and I was worried about that affecting my steering. So we got that. We got the ball joints, the brakes, the, tie, the, um, the sway bar end links, all that stuff. The truck is ready to go. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please smash that like button for me. Hit the subscribe. Smash the bell if you want to get notified of future videos coming out from DJ's Hot Rod and Fab. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.